Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this uh, VR session. So before I start, how many of you have tried any type of VR experience? Raise your hand. OK, quite a few, quite a few. That's good. Uh, OK, so we're going to look at the, the VR market, and then we'll go into um, why I think it's important for you guys to actually pay attention to what's happening in, in VR at the moment. And then we'll look uh, more closely at some of the video use cases that's relevant for, for this show. Uh, and then I have some tips and pointers for how to, to get ready for the future. So first, just uh, a brief uh, background. So I'm the SVP and co-founder of Exedo. So fundamentally, we design uh, build and, and manage video uh, experiences around the world for the pay TV and media companies. Uh, you've, you, many of the brands are recognized here. And obviously these, these are all thinking about VR and what, what to do, right? So that's why we are interested in, in VR and what's, what's happening and the trends. Okay, so let's look into the market as such. Um, so the classic way to look at this would be to show you um, a lot of numbers, right? So this is a classic uh, view where I can, all these numbers are pretty impressive, right? You have the Goldman Sachs report says that even in a base case scenario, this is a quite a big industry. Um, and you can see the numbers that there's gonna be millions of devices uh, and, and so forth. So I want to challenge this, this picture a bit by having another perspective because at least for me, it's, it's hard to look at numbers and, and really understand what's, what's going on. So another way of looking at VR would be to, what I, why I think you should pay attention. And that's the typical thing of looking at VR now is you, you, you think about the device proliferation. You have all these devices. You have Xbox, PlayStation, and mobile phones, etc. And all of them have different appliances and different applications to go with them. Um, and many of us still think of VR as this is yet another device, right? Where you have new types of applications. Uh, and that's one way of looking at this, right? But I think if you think about what's, what's been happening the last 10, 20 years and look at how we interact with computers, you can see that we're going from very basic ways of interacting um, in the old days of, of um, operating systems, um, where we're using now swiping and touching uh, mechanism. And we see with technologies like Alexa, voice is becoming really interesting. And we also see with VR, you have haptic feedback and really room scale experiences. And this is a completely different way of interacting with any type of application. I think that's, this is the perspective you should have when thinking about VR, why it's important. So fundamentally, it, it will change the way we interact with anything. And, and it's not about video apps only, right? Because if you think about this, it's, it's a new paradigm, how you interact with anything. So yeah, gaming is, of course, a big application. Uh, video ent entertainment is maybe our primary interest, uh, those of us who are at NAB. But even education and productivity and, and health will see uh, quite big leaps from, from virtual reality. And I think when you look at this at virtual reality from that perspective, it's easier to read quotes like this from Frost and Sullivan, for example, where they are very bullish and, and claim that virtual reality will fundamentally replace television. Uh, this quote is a bit too bullish for my taste. I, I, th I think it will take more time, but I think uh, not until you see virtual reality from that perspective, you can really understand a quote like this because it's, it will truly fundamentally change how we interact with any type of application as a layer on top. Uh, the other thing that's interesting is to look at adoption rates for, for new type of technology, right? 
So what we've seen in the last 20, 25 years it, is that each new type of technology uh, has a faster adoption rate. So you can see with the PC and the mobile phones and internet, everything is going faster and faster. So this means that no one knows about VR, of course. We are just in the, in the beginning, uh, but it's a, it's a fair assumption to, to think that this will also go faster as a technology cycle. Uh, this is uh, one of my favorite, um, I guess you all know about the Mary Meeker Internet Report. Uh, this is a, a, a good analysis uh, from that report, where they fundamentally describe how new technology not only give you access to that specific technology, uh, each new type of technology uh, will sort of grow into, um, uh, you will have different perspectives and you will have, if you look at the smart, uh, the mobile internet, we can see that you have tablets and smartphones and all these appliances are based on the sort of fundamentals of, of mobile internet. Uh, but it was hard to realize all these use cases uh, 10 years back, right? So it's each new technology cycle gives us more appliances and, and more use cases. And I think we're just in the beginning of virtual reality to even try to comprehend what we, what, what we can do and what we can achieve. Um. So uh, when we have looked at um, some of the video related use cases, uh, we have, uh, this is, this is uh, SNL Kagan, that's a report. Uh, they asked um, a bunch of um, American consumers what they were into in, in terms of VR. And as you can see that uh, quite a few of the use cases are video centric. Uh, you have movies, you have TV, you have YouTube and sports, uh, which is typically live and, and is a good use case for virtual reality. So there is, there is a strong interest in a video-centric use case on, on virtual reality. Um, but if we dig one step further into this, and uh, we have made an effort into categorizing the different uh, virtual reality use cases in, in different types of um, experiences. So we came up with these five. Um, one is the, the virtual setting where you basically uh, can uh, watch a classic type of 2D uh, movie in a different context. Maybe you might be in, in um, Hawaii uh, on a beach watching a movie, for example. That's, that's uh, one typical use case. I, I will showcase a, a few examples in a bit. And then we've seen uh, there are a few media companies that's good, uh, doing a good thing when they are trying to extend sort of the, the content proposition by extending the, uh, the value. So we've seen HBO with Game of Thrones have done applications that will sort of fundamentally prolong the, um, the season of, of a show by putting consumers into the Game of Thrones context after the season is, is over. Uh, live events is one obvious use case uh, where I think we, uh, we all can, I mean, it's easy to picture yourself uh, having the best seat and uh, at the basketball game, for example. You can sell that seat um, many times instead of just one time for a physical person, right? And then I think this is probably my, my personal favorite. This is uh, immersive documentaries where we've seen companies try, uh, starting to experiment about with documentaries where they put you sort of in, inside uh, the experience. And that gives you much more immersive uh, feeling. Uh, I will showcase some examples. And then, of course, the holy grail is, is to have uh, content which is scripted for VR. Uh, but that's typically hard to do initially, right? Because you need to have a, a, a big market to justify uh, the expense, right? But that would mean that you would actually do a specific VR movie with scripted content. Um, So if we look at the virtual setting, we can see quite a few use cases. So you have, I'm not sure if you've tried YouTube, have a, a player where you can 
uh, more or less uh, feel like you're inside a movie theater, right? Um, Hulu has an interesting example where they, uh, you can be inside sort of a expensive LA mansion, a mansion to watch a movie and you can even connect with your friends through avatars and you can have social interactions while you're watching the movie. Um, and Netflix has a similar experience like YouTube where you pretty much can be inside uh, another house or a movie theater to watch the, the classic 2D content, right? So this is the, I, I mentioned the extending the, the content proposition where fundamentally we've seen companies like Fox Sports are using highlights and, and realize to sort of uh, capitalize on, on their content um, uh, in addition to the live uh, event, right? And HBO have done some clever things with um, Game of Thrones where you, they put you in a cage and you'll experience some of the things that the, the Game of Thrones characters uh, experience throughout the show. Um, Uh, as I said, this is probably the most obvious use case where all of us can, can see the use case. Um, basketball or even in, at the, the Trump inauguration, they had um, a VR camera. So you could be uh, really close to uh, the inauguration and watch that live, right? Uh, you even have uh, music and, and opera houses that testing out this new technology to be able to sell tickets outside of the, the theater, right? <coughs> so again, this is, is probably my favorite. Uh, the one at the bottom is, is Times, who did a um, really clever story on Fallujah. So you know the, in Iraq, uh, the Iraq war. Uh, so this is pretty interesting, where you fundamentally are like a vo war correspondent. So you will actually see and hear the things they hear on the ground, right? So it's, it's a truly immersive experience. And I'm quite certain that watching this documentary in a classic 2D only versus this uh, VR experience, is that, that's quite a difference. And we know that the more senses you involve, uh, the more you learn and, and, and can feel, right? So I think this is a fantastic opportunity for all kinds of uh, documentaries to, to be made, right? I've even seen other documentaries about bullying where you can experience how it is to be bullied. And it's, it's quite a harsh experience. And um, uh, it's, it's very interesting. And we've also seen uh, BBC Earth are doing lots of uh, interesting stuff with um, animals where they combine uh, cameras on top of the animals uh, with uh, CGI uh, graphics. So it's, it's quite an interesting uh, experience. Last but not least, this is obviously the, the holy grail of uh, any VR uh, content, right? It's, um, it's very early days and we don't have that much scripted content for, for VR at the moment. Um, but in this case, the whole production is, is thought through from day one, uh, from a VR perspective. So the script, uh, the movie, everything is, is made, purposely made, custom made for a VR experience. So this is, um, we will obviously see more of this, but this is a limited amount of content that's available today uh, with this. Okay, so in terms of getting ready for VR, I think the, the key thing is to understand if you've tried some VR applications, you know that can, can be quite a big difference uh, pending what type of hardware you're using. So you have some of the, uh, the brands are pretty basic, it has sort of a less immersive is experience. Uh, maybe also very limited in interactions that's possible. And you have the high-end devices that are very 
impressive and offer you um, lots of interaction opportunities. So I think you need to think through what type of company you are, what type of content you might have. Um, do you need to test on the sort of premium headsets? Can you do, go low end? What's the, what's the objective with your VR investment? If it's to test out a prototype or see where this is heading, maybe the more expensive ones are the right choice. But if you're looking for mass market, then obviously the, the low end devices are uh, the ones you should go after because that's where the mass market will be. So again, you have to think through, um, maybe if you have content, you can repurpose that content uh, in a VR setting with a VR UX. Uh, that's one way to capitalize on, on the content you already have. Um, or you can enhance it using uh, 360 cameras and so forth. I think um, quite a few of you probably will, will, will go about and, and create sort of scripted VR content because we're not really there yet. Um, but hopefully companies like Facebook and others who are getting engaged in the VR industry will, will help with, with the content side because this is a chicken and egg problem as, as always. And if, if you want to, if you have five minutes, uh, we have a, a booth, uh, one minute over there, where we showcase a sport experience uh, using a uh, classic video, but we have added sort of a uh, VR UX on top of it to showcase that you can actually capitalize on the content you have today. You don't need to uh, invest in, in new content. I think this is an eye opener for many of the people we are showing this for. So if you have a few minutes, please uh, come to our booth and check it out. It's, it's a cool demo using the NBA League. Thank you.